Hello students, today we are going to see the topic Wage Incentive Plans to Direct Workers. I am Professor K. Kalidas to handle this session for you. So what is Wage Incentive Plan? Wage Incentive Plan is a reward for an employee for his good job performance like quality, quantity, efficiency, utilization of resources, etc. If a worker is able to produce a good quality product in good numbers with good level of performance using limited resources, everything adds benefits to the industry. If an industry is getting benefited, Obviously, an incentive has to be provided to the employee for the benefits. Wage incentive schemes guarantee a base wage plus an incentive. So there is there will be a basic wage provided to the employee. In addition, according to his performance, an initiative should be added up with the base wage. So this plan should depend on the standard set by the work measurement. So it's a mutual agreement between the employer and the employee. So what is the requirement of a wage incentive plan? So this plan should be easy, understandable, and it should involve less clerical work. So the idea of giving the incentive should not be a confused one. So it should be an organized, well-planned methodology and it should guarantee a minimum wage for the employee. As said, it should reward the employee efforts and achievements. It should be based on time study. Standards should be set for the wage payment in par with the methods that have been adopted. This plan should be employed with the consent of the employee. Plan should be tightly ma maintained and followed inside the industry. So what are its objectives? So incentives should be profitable to both the employee and the management. So it should help increase in production, lowering its related costs. So it should Reward the worker in proportion to his output. It should support the worker to increase his standard of living. It should provide recognition to the worker. It acts as a basis for cost control and labor control. It improves the relationship between the employee and the management. So these are two objectives of the page incentive plan. So what is the disadvantage of? So for standardization or record keeping of the performance, installation and maintenance of the plan, an extra cost is involved. The employer's performance can be recorded using the camera, staff watch, or any modern techniques. So incorporation of modern techniques involves always a cost. Similarly, an unstructured or unplanned scheme will create troubles between the labor and the management. The ramp between the labor and the management will demolish. Also, if you get the opinion from the workers regarding the scheme, every worker will have his own opinion. So these different opinions will create dispute among the workers. So for direct workers, direct workers are the labors who is directly involved in production process. So the type of plans is given for direct workers of straight piece rate. So 
there will be a basic page and we know how many products that can be manufactured on a single shift say for example 100 pieces are made on a shift that piece is going to get 10 rupees if he makes the extra then that has to be multiplied with the weight if he makes 110 then obviously he should get 1910 rupees so it's a straight piece the second type is straight piece rate with guaranteed basic weight. So the same thing has to be done, but the basic, uh, in addition to the basic weight, the extra product that he makes that has to be multiplied by the cost. In the first case, it is the product into cost. But here, the basic weight plus product into cost. Then differential piece rate. So there will be a standard wage for a standard output. So if he has crossed that standard, he will get the maximum wage. If he is less than the standard, then there is a minimum wage. So based on the level of performance, wage is decided. Say for example, standard information says. 100 products can be done. If he is making more than that, then he will get the maximum wage. If he is making less than that, he will get the minimum wage. So that's the idea of differential wage. Then fourth one is the ICS plan. So it says minimum wage plus 50 percentage of wage on saved time. So the time saved while doing the job. For that time, the maximum of 50% of the salary can be given to the worker as an additional incentive with minimum wage. So minimum wage plus 50% of the wage on saved time. Then Roman plan. So again, it says minimum wage plus ratio of time saved by minimum wage. So what is the ratio of time saved? It says, say for 100 hours, let's work for 90 hours, 10 hours are saved. So 90 by 100 is 0 0.9. So 0.9 into minimum wage. So that will be added as the Incentive with the minimum wage. So out of 80, if he is working for 70 hours, then 70 by 80 into the minimum wage. That will be added as the percentage of incentive. Then Vidox plan. So it says minimum wage plus number of standard working minutes into 70 percentage of the wage. So it is calculating the working hours or working minutes into 75% of the wage. In Emerson's plan, efficiency plan indicates the percentage of wage based on efficiency has to be added as the incentive with the minimum wage. Then group incentive wage. So here individual is not going to be the measuring criteria. As a group, they are going to work. So whatever the profit that has been obtained, the percentage will be given to the labors. So if 10 labors are working over that, that percentage will be divided among the 10 members in the group. That will be the incentive that will, they will be getting along with the new wage. So all these plans say about what is the percentage of incentive that can be given to a worker along with their minimum wage. So these are the direct investment, sorry, direct incentive. So in this lecture, we have seen the basics of incentive schemes, their requirements, objectives, and its disadvantages. Then the type of incentive plans for direct purpose. Thank you.